Well, welcome to my tutorial about how to improvise over blue bossa with only using scales for E flat instruments. So part one of is using scales. Step one is to analyze the key of the song in order to find what scales we could use or which we have to use. So here's the song, we look at the key signature. So we have C major or A minor here. If you don't know about this stuff, um, check out my tutorial about keys and scales. So now we know it's either in C major or A minor. To be sure, we have to look at the last tone of the melody. Keep in mind it's that the last note of the song here is um, only played when you repeat the melody. So here we have an E, the last melody note, and that doesn't help us because it is neither a C nor an A. So normally, or very often, um, the last tone of the melody is the root. In this case, it's the fifth or um, the third. But when we look on the chord, on the last chord, and even on the chords of the tune, sometimes just ever look around the tune and there is no C major here, so why should it be C major? It's obviously A minor. Okay, now we should have uh, take a closer look at the chords and um, because the chord or the bass tone, if you play with a bass player without piano, you just play in the chords as well, um, the chord makes the character of the melody note, so try it out yourself, you know, play a C chord over, uh, and then play a C, or f and then play a B chord, and play a C as a melody note, and you will recognize sounds, the C sounds terrible if you play a B chord. If you have no um, harmony instrument, just play a C major scale three times, and then play a C, and then play a B major scale three times, and then play a C. It's the same effect. So, even if a C is a C, the moment a chord comes, um, it will change its color. So we have here we have all the different chords in the song, different chords. The A minor 7, D minor 7, B minor 7, flat 5, and the E7, B9. But let's just ignore the flat 9, it's not important when, when playing with scales in the moment, it's important when playing with chord notes uh, in the next tutorial. C minor 7, F7, B flat major 7. Good. Let's have a closer look how they are built. So if you don't know about chords, just um, check out my tutorial about chords and even the cadences, which we need later. So as we can see here, by ignoring the G sharp, so we don't have any accidentals, just C major. And then from the C minor on, we get the B flat and the E flat. So obviously here the key changes from, it changes to B flat major. But we want to have a deeper look uh, to understand this better.
what this means with the G sharp here. So even if the song is in A minor, we look in it to the changes of C major, which is a parallel major to A minor, so that we can see how the normal state is and then understand could understand better what happens in minor. So in major it's clearly there is no, as you can see here, there's um, a minor chord. Um, this is normal, first degree, second degree, third, you know, you, if you have already come in with improvisation or with, with looking at chords, you know, with you have this traditional two, five, one, which is a minor chord, a dominant chord, and a major chord. Now we rearrange it to see um, how it is in minor. A minor, B minor seven, flat five. Just change the order. And now we can see that on the fifth degree there is a minor chord. And we need a dominant seven, minimal at least, we need a, a major triad to state the key of D minor. Oh, a key always needs a tonic and a dominant. And here we don't have a dominant. That's why. We have to change, you have to change uh, the fifth degree to a major chord in minor. Transfers it to a dominant seven chord. Now we have a look at the remaining chords which are left. The C minor seven, the F seven and the B flat major seven because none of them is part of the C major or A minor scale. So where do those come from? Well, obviously, E flat major is either a tonic or a subdominant. Let's assume first uh, that it's a tonic. So we write down the changes from B flat major scale to see whether it makes sense. And as you can see already, the C minor is on the second degree and the F7 is on the fifth degree, which is, of course, uh, two minus seven, five, seven, one major cadence here perfectly. So we know now the B flat major is a tonic and that the key changes here from the C minor on till the B minor 7 flat 5 comes again. So here's a quicker way to find cadences using the circle of fifths. Just um, take any, any, at any point, just make a one and then go clockwise then you have the fifth degree, the dominant, and then you have the second degree, which is the parallel of the subdominant. So, the result is that we need, we, we need at least two scales to improvise over blue boss. So we need the A minor scale or the C major scale, which is the same. Keep in mind that they have the same then tone, so what make the difference is the focus you you put on your melodies which which note or which tone you focus like um, being in A minor you would focus on the A being in C major you would focus on the C as I said before we will ignore the G sharp of the E7 because it lasts only one bar and since it is a altered chord uh, meaning has a flat 90 or or as well has a sharp 9 and the sharp 9 is a G so the G will sound perfect you will recognize it when you play it 
One thing you should keep in mind is there are only two different tones between A minor and B flat major. It's not something totally different. Sometimes people, students, they think it's, there's a new scale coming and everything changes, but no, not at all. So only two tones um, changing. And you can see it here, it's like um, you have the A minor scale and the B flat major scale. They have one, two, three, four, five common tones. What I say is it's not so dangerous, you know, maybe uh, to play a wrong note. Okay. Now, in the sheet, we can mark it like this. It would be good for you to, to do this in your sheets. Just mark it, you know, let you know. On the, and when you, when you improvise, look uh, at the sheet to see what's happening. So we have uh, the A, A minor scale for the first eight bars and the last four bars. And in between, we modulate to the B flat major scale. Here are some tips uh, for you. Um, often when students play um, a thing in scales, they just play, they start with the root and go upwards or they go downwards, you know, always upwards, upwards, upwards and downwards, downwards, downwards. But this won't sound good. It's better to imagine the root is in the middle of the scale. You go some tones up and some tones down and then back to the root. So that's very important in the beginning. Just always start with the root and try to end with the root. This makes your melodies um, sound logical. Um, because our ears, they love melodies that are waving around the root, like, like this, for instance. You know, just going up, down, and then back to the root. It's pretty good. You couldn't do so much wrong when if you if you play in this manner. Um, when you get familiar to the scales, to the changing of the scales, the next step is um, to focus on the root of the chord of the moment. That means if you come to the D minor, just play the D and wave around the, the D, and do the same if you come to the E, play the root and wave around the root of the E because this would sound more logical and um, as well you train, it's the first step to train playing and with chord tones. So you think only in scales and just have always, uh, just have this one root here, root here, root here. That starts your process of thinking while you play because this is um, very important when playing with chord tones. The way we do now is, is, is called the model way or the horizontal way of playing with scales. And this is very, very dangerous to get bored, to get boring for others, for the people you're listen to, listening to you or the, even more important, the people who play with you. You know, if a bass player, imagine a bass player is playing uh, five minutes, if he has three soloists, he's playing five minutes, just walking bass or whatever. And he's just listening, you know, and if you bore him, you know, he, he will, that suck him, you know, he will, he will lose, he will lose his energy, his, his, his fun. So try to think in small phrases in the beginning. Just play four or three notes, focus on the rhythm, not on the notes, play interesting rhythm, listen to the drummer, and... It's like a language, you know, don't play like politicians talk, you know, without any, they have no sentence at all, it's just one long sentence. And some musicians play like this, and this is very boring, even if it's, you know, technical, very, very, uh, technically very um, on a high level. It's, after a while it's boring, and uh, so focus on small melodies. The best thing is you play a melody like do ba do ba do bop, ba do ba do bop, bop 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 do 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 ba do do ba do. This is like you know you listen to what you've been playing, you what what to what you played, and then give yourself the answer. And this way you 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 communicate with yourself, and everyone is understanding what you're doing. And 
after a while you can start to play bigger longer lines so very very important that you always focus on your ear you it's much more important when you play in a model way to listen to what you play when then when playing over chords with keeping chords in your mind you you have to think so much so you won't play too much in, in the beginning because you have so much to think about but scales is always a trap to 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 doodle around so music is like a language you know you need you need like waves in in, in what you say sometimes it's short and you make a short sentence and make a long sentence it's just like telling a story not like talking like a politician yeah. I think that's clear good now we have enough theory now it's time for you to play you get three choruses of blue bossa but before if you like the tutorial share it with your friends on your social media sites gives me more subscribers which is important in YouTube to nowadays to get the chance to earn money in the moment I don't earn anything Sub subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and of course if you if this video helps you did help you and you liked it I'm happy to get support and respect in form of money because I need money to live and to have time to make such tutorials you can do this in my shop by just um, donating whatever you want. And now, have fun with playing Blue Bossa.